Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition, another episode of Simply Finance. My name is Shane White, and I, of course, am your host. Today is Tuesday, April 22nd, uh, episode 27 already of the podcast. We're, we've been cruising lately. We are putting them out. Um, I'm going to start off with yesterday's market performance. Uh, I'm filming this early in the morning, uh, right as the markets opened. So the markets are actually up first thing this morning. So uh, on the next episode, I'll definitely talk about how things went today. But good news is futures oils for a lot of people, you know, good news for a lot of people that futures oils prices are up. Uh, Actually, that's what we're kind of talking about today is futures in general. So uh, but as of yesterday, yesterday was a very rough day for the market. The Dow was down 2.6%, the S&P down 3%, and the NASDAQ down 3.5%. So it's been some wild swings. I feel like I've been saying that now for almost a month. Uh, just the, the, the multiple percentage swings up and down were not a common thing before this pandemic really took over. So very interesting. I mean, I'll just tell you right now, I'm looking, if I look at the exact same thing already right out the gate, the Dow's up 1.6 this morning, the S&P up 1.9, and the NASDAQ's up over 2% already. So wild, wild to see these swings back and forth. Um, If you hop over to my stock market rebound tracker, which is always in the link uh, in the show notes, I have, I, if you get in there at any, any point during the day, I have it ranked um, from best to worst performing on the day. And so if you do that, uh, you can quickly see in that tracker what falls to the bottom for the most part are all the major airlines. So they're all down. I mean, United Airlines this morning is down over 7%. Americans down over 4%. I'm telling you, airlines are going to be the play uh, out of this coronavirus pandemic. I for sure am going to be putting money into there. It just keeps falling. They've had a few good days, uh, but it just keeps falling over and over and over. So I'm holding steady um, and we'll see. We'll see what happens to them. Um, United Airlines is near their 52 week low. Um, They hit their 52 week low already, but they're almost there again. So anyway, that's the markets this morning. I always like to do a quick update for all of you because if you do listen to this real time, I just think it's a nice way to uh, get a check in, a pulse on what's going on. So today uh, is a new concept for me as far as like, this is the first time I've really dove in and try to understand how uh, these work. Uh, and when I'm saying these, I'm talking about futures and futures contracts. It seems very timely to go into this today, especially with uh, the amount of news around the oil market. And that's the episode I did a couple days ago when the oil prices on futures went negative for the first time in the history of the stock market. And so I thought, you know, I've always heard about futures contracts. Uh, I've also messed around with something relatively similar, similar, which is options. I've just never fully understood what futures, how they work. And so I did a deep dive last night and wanted to share all that with you today. So we're going to jump right in. So what is a futures contract? A futures contract is another way to invest in the market. So the common thing we talk about on here is, you know, you would buy a share of a company, right? And your hope over time is that that company grows. So if you buy a stock of one share of Apple today, you hope over the timeline or time frame of you owning Apple, the price goes up, eventually you can sell it and you make money, right? That's the whole simple concept that most people think of when we talk about investments, right? Futures though are, are a lot different. And what they are is it's really you locking in a contract um, that at a future date, And at a future price, you are locked in, and depending on your side of the coin that you're playing for the future contract, at that date, so on a specific date, at a specific price that you lock in today, you will be required to either buy or sell the contract. So if I'll stop there and just maybe break that down, simplify that a little further. So again, the difference between a regular investment and this is a regular investment. You're just watching that stock price 
you're hoping it goes up, up, and up, and you're going to sell it someday. Futures contract, let's say, you know, today is April 22nd. Let's say the contract expires December 22nd. And from a real simple perspective, I'll go into a better example of kind of like how this works. Uh, but really, uh, if you think about like today, if, if I locked in a December oil futures contract, and today I'm going to pull up my computer. Let's see what oil is trading at. Oil is trading at $14.39. So if today I think that in December, oil is going to be at $20 a barrel, I could lock in that price at $20 to sell on December 22nd, for example. That would, that would be like what you're, you're doing, right? So that's kind of the background of like what's just the simple version of what a futures contract is. Um, what type of items can you buy with futures? That's a commonly asked question. You can't just buy futures of necessarily everything. It's not like you can buy futures of every stock or anything. Most of the items that are sold on futures are commodities like oil, natural gas, and even like corn, wheat. Uh, you can also do actual, you can actually do futures on stock market indexes. So timely again, yesterday, uh, if you want to listen to yesterday's episode, I dove into the different stock market indexes and those actually have futures contracts tied to them that you can invest in, which is tied to the general, depending on the index, it's you know tied to a certain set of stocks. You can also buy futures for currency. Uh, so this is cool because you can actually start to hedge bets if you're interested in um, dollar values. Uh, I shouldn't say dollar values, dollar in the U.S., but currency values of other countries, right? So you could you could actually uh, you know buy uh, euros, for example, euros or British pounds today. Uh, you could buy a contract future of what that'll be worth. Uh, for example, like after Brexit happens, if you think it's going to move one way or the other, that could be, you know, obviously I'm, I haven't really said this yet, but I'm alluding to the fact that there's a, there's obviously an evident amount of risk involved in futures contracts, but that is another option. And then one that's pretty common and is used a lot. This is definitely more of a corporate or uh, I would say like institutional investors are going to lean here is you can also buy futures contracts for U.S. Treasury bonds. So in the bond market, you can also get involved with futures. Now, one difference I wanted to make sure I called out right away was if you've looked in or messed around with options trading, they have similarities in the sense that you're not just buying a share of a company in the hopes that it's going up necessarily. So I'm not going to go into options today. I think options might be an op episode I'll do later this week because it's an, another topic that I've, I've danced around and I know like enough to be dangerous, but I really want to do a deep dive to share with all of you. And I also just want to have that uh, to evolve my trading game. So uh, options though, you're not locked into a contract per se, the same way you are with futures. The difference with options is at the date that you're required to buy or sell, you have the option to not exercise the option. You can, so you can lose, you can basically lose your entire investment, but you have the option in most scenarios not to go like negative if it goes the opposite way in some examples of options. So anyway, that's what the difference of those two. Uh, so the next question I think a lot of people probably are thinking right now is, so why would I want to invest in options or sorry, not options. Why would I want to invest in futures? What's the point? A big, a big use of options is people who want to speculate or hedge a direction um, on an underlying asset on which way it'll move. So a lot of people would rather bet on the future of something. There's a lot of upside and there's also a potential for major downside, uh, but a lot of risky investors who want to find lots of upward potential will look here, especially if they feel like they have economic reasons to believe that something like the price of oil will go up over time. Um, another huge lever for futures contracts are actually companies. So companies that are involved in buying these commodities. A good example would be uh, an airline. An airline like American or United 
might buy futures contracts of oil. And what they are doing there is they are trying to hedge against the potential of the price fluctuating drastically. So they can actually, if there's a price ahead of time, they can plan for that. They can buy a contract for X thousand barrels of oil at you know $20 a barrel. And they know on that date, they can physically take ownership of those barrels of oil and kind of protect themselves in situations for the most part where oil would, you know, shoot through the roof. And that was, that's kind of a good example. Um, so how does this really work and why is it so risky? So when you're doing a futures contract, I'm, I'm going to use oil as an example. Um, each contract, the minimum you're buying is a thousand barrels of oil. So for example, if you're, if you're investing, um, if you want to invest, you know, in a thousand, let's say the price is $20 a barrel. It's not today, but that's what it's been trending at over the last few weeks. A thousand barrels is $20,000, right? That's the minimum you can get into it with. So that just in itself is obviously a lot of money and a lot of people can't do that right away. I mean, it depends if you have a lot of money, really. And so what you're doing, and for most of these futures investments, is you're actually leveraging your investment through essentially a loan through your brokerage. Um, so for example, if in my same example, if we were wanting to buy a thousand barrels of oil and that was going to cost us $20,000, there's a chance that what you would be doing is maybe you have $10,000 you want to put towards that and you can borrow the other 10. And your hope is that obviously it's going to go above that and you're going to, you're going to make the incremental amount between what you have to exercise at the contract date and what it's actually worth when you sell it, right? And your hope is you, you know, you borrowed 10 to get you the 20, but you actually made 30. So you give the 10 back, you keep 10 yourself. Um, and it allowed you to make 10 on actually only 10,000 investment, as if that makes sense. So you only forked up 10, you borrowed 10, but by the time this thing was due, it was actually worth 30. So you gave the 10 back to the brokerage, and you get to keep 20. So you made 10 on 10, which is, that's a huge increase. Now that's a huge jump and that's not what you should always expect, but it could go the other way. Um, and this is where it becomes really risky. So if it goes down and you borrow this money, you can have, and I'll jump into this. This is like the major danger of a futures contract is the chance of what's called a margin call. So if you think about it, and this is why I've never been super serious about doing futures. I think if you're someone who has a lot of liquidity and you want to risk some money and you know what you're doing, this could be a great option for you. Someone who maybe is new in the market or someone who can't risk that kind of money, what can happen if things go belly up or you know come crashing down is you can have what's called a margin call. And this is when your investment turns down and this is where you can really amplify your losses and see um, major, major problems for yourself financially. Um, so what's happening when you get a margin call? So essentially what happens is if you're going to borrow money from a brokerage, they will do that if you have, um, you know, a clean trading record. There's a lot, there's a few things that go into even being able to invest in futures. I don't have all the details in front of me, but not just anyone can do it. And one of the keys is you have to have a certain amount of money in your brokerage account to even qualify. So if you're gonna borrow $10,000, usually from whatever that investment is, so if you're gonna invest 20, most brokerages and actually the federal government requires you to have like 30 to 40% of that in your brokerage account. Now that doesn't have to be in cash, that can be in other investments within there, but they wanna make sure you at least have enough money to cover most of this if it goes down because people lose money every day on this stuff. It's not like everyone's making money, obviously. So I have an example of a margin call and what happens. So again, I'm going to use my oil example. You invest in a thousand barrels of oil, at $20 a barrel. So your investment is $20,000. Uh, you have $10,000 to put towards that. So your equity or what you own in this investment is the 10,000. That means you're getting a loan from this brokerage firm for another 10,000 to get to the total of 20,000. Now let's say it's, again, I'm, this is April. Let's say we were buying a December's uh, oil contract. And let's say we're now 
uh, at the beginning of December. And unfortunately, our $20,000 investment, um, the $20 a share barrel that we were at when we, um, or that's what, that's what the contract's at. Let's say now uh, it's getting near and it looks like the price of oil on that contract is actually gonna be 12. $12 a barrel instead of $20 a barrel. So we lost $8 from our investment. We haven't lost it yet, but this is what your broker is going to see and what they're going to expect you to be losing. So now that $20,000 investment has gone down to $12,000. $12 a barrel times the 1,000 barrels we invest. We locked in on that contract to expire at the end of December. We now have $12,000. So now your loan amount is still the 10. The brokers doesn't give a shit what happened to what happened to the price. You still owe the 10. Okay. But your equity that you put in at 10, now that the, the total amount it's worth is a 12, take that 10 out, your equity went from 10 to two. So the 8,000 is all on you, buddy. It's all your money. You don't own, or you're, you're not going to get that back out. So this brokerage account, I'm going to use the example of 25%. So they expect you to have at least 25% of the investment in your account. Now, 25% of the 12,000 would be $3,000. Since you only have 2,000 in equity and they expect you to have at least 3,000, they're going to give you a margin call, which is literally you're going to get an email or a phone call from your brokerage saying, hey, we need you to put $1,000 in your account to cover your margin call, or I am going to be forced to sell your equities in order to make up the $1,000 difference. So remember at the beginning, I said you have to have enough in your account, and usually it's 30 to 40% of what you're investing. So what can happen is you have a couple options. One, you buy whatever the data is they need you to cover the margin call. And that's what it's called, covering the margin call for this futures contract. You would need to, you need to put $1,000 in your account just to cover um, what you need in there. You would need to take that out of your bank account, put $1,000 in. Option two, you can go in and you know, sell your stocks of Apple and Tesla and anything else to, to get to back to $1,000 of liquid cash to put in your account. That's option two. Three, if you don't do anything, they're going to do it for you, which is probably the worst option of all. Because at least the first two, you get to control how much and what you're selling. But in option three, your broker can literally, and, and most brokerages have this set up this way when you agree to the futures contract and you agree to borrow their money. You actually will be hands off the wheel. They'll go into your account and they'll just start selling shares of companies that'll get them the thousand dollars back. I don't know, you know, depending on the broker, I don't know how much effort they go into this to try to help you out or that they just don't give a shit and they want to just get their money. Um, but that's what happens when it goes down. And I just wanted to explain what a margin call was and how that works. So obviously like there's two, two, two sides of the futures coin, right? There's the, there's a lot of the companies that get involved. So they're, and you think about it, they're really hedging their risk. So they would rather not let the price of oil fluctuate, which fluctuates all the time. They would don't want that to fully affect their earnings, right? And it was, we've talked about from a cash perspective and then from an earnings perspective, that's going to then swing their price point. And they don't want that, right? They want to make sure that they are a company that can bring earnings to the table every quarter for their investors, make sure dividends are paid out. And they can't always do that if the price is fluctuating and they have no control. So they're putting, they're putting contracts in to hedge. Now, the, invest, the investors, on the other hand, that's where we can get in. And we're on the other side of the coin with the contract on either the buy or the sell. And we're betting that it's going one way or the other, right? So you can, you can bet that it's going down. You can do future contracts where you bet they're going up. But from like a 101 level here for futures, uh, just to get you understand what that is, that's where the, inv the investors basically are the ones taking the risk on it going up or down, right? You're going to have to exercise your contract when the date comes up at a certain price. If you were right, you're going to make good money. If you were wrong, you're not. And the, and the companies that locked in their price 
on the same thing to buy or sell, they're the ones that are being having consistent price points. They know what they're going to, and they're going to take full ownership of that contract. So another way to think about that is like you and I, if we're, if we're investing in futures contracts, we're not going to put our hands on that oil. We're never going to touch it. We're never going to see it. When, it, when the price, like when the, when the contract expires, when we sell that, someone like American Airlines is the one buying it. Now they locked, they've been hedging for that all year. So they knew when they got to December, that was their price they were going to pay for and they were prepared for that. So you see how the companies get to, they get to deleverage or lose their risk in this situation. And us as investors, we're the ones that take on the risk or the reward. So I hope that makes sense. That's a very uh, high level understanding of how futures contracts work. When you look at your, uh, any of your brokerage accounts or you're on, you know, CNBC, Market Watch, whatever it is, Yahoo Finance, any of the places you watch stocks, um, you can look at the futures prices and they're always moving, right? Uh, it's another way to look into the future. That's why like before the market opens, a lot of times they're talking about what the futures indexes and what the futures prices are doing. A lot of times the futures, uh, those will dictate how the market moves that day. So if uh, pre-market and in the futures, they're, gr they're up, they're green. Usually, excuse me, usually that's exactly what happens uh, during the day of the market. Not always, but it's usually a pretty good indication of what's going to happen. Uh, that's it. That's it, folks. I hope all that made sense. I hope I broke that down in a good way. Hope you kind of feel like you like at least have a decent understanding now of what futures are, how they work. Um, and again, if you want to get into futures, I would suggest doing a lot more of your own homework. You can lose a shit ton of money on these. Uh, you can also make a shit ton of money, but this is definitely getting into a much more advanced level of investing. It takes a lot more money and there's a lot more risk and reward. So this is not your everyday uh, trading scenario. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for listening. Again, I can't thank all of you enough for uh, tuning in and giving us support here at Simply Finance. Um, my name is Shane. I hope you have a great day and we'll be back soon. Thank you.